Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be making a glow for CSGO where our teammates they glow green and the enemies glow red. This is going to be the fourth episode in the CSGO multi-hack series. We're going to have many features, in the final video we will make this vac undetected. These are going to be detailed tutorials, the free download to this and the code for each video will be in the description. GameVersal.club is currently down, but the code will still be in the description. Do save this playlist, the playlist link will also be down below because we are going to do a new episode every week. Before we jump right into coding, I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers a subscription-based plan that gives its members access to a wide variety of educational courses. Skillshare has many topics to learn, such as, but not limited to, video production, web development, and programming. Skillshare's high-quality courses and videos make learning a new topic easy. Skillshare members get access to thousands of high-quality classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a community of millions. If you're like me and enjoy film, you might enjoy the fundamentals of DSLR photography taught by Justin Briggs. Or you might enjoy picking up a new programming language on Skillshare. Start your 2020 year off right. Whether you're advanced in a topic or dabbling in a new field, Skillshare has classes that can fit your learning style and schedule. Skillshare is incredibly affordable with an annual subscription that's less than $10 a month. Learn something new this year. Click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. Before getting into coding, I would highly recommend disabling Valve Anti-Cheat back just to develop safely because you don't know what's going to happen. It'd even be best to just make a second Steam account uh, since CSGO is free just to test down and all of that. Alright, so for my IDE, I'm going to be using Microsoft Visual Studio Community 2017. You can get Community 2019, there's not much difference. I'm just still on 2017 because there really is no reason to update. But Microsoft Visual Studio Code, that is a completely different thing and you don't want to use that. So just make sure you get a Visual Studios Community. But we're going to go over to File, New, and click Project. And we're going to make a Visual C++ project. And we want this to be empty project just so we can avoid pre-compiled headers like PCH. Uh, we'll just name this something simple like Glow CSGO and save it to whatever location you want. This is where the actual build of the application will be, so just remember the location at which you make this. All right, we wanna make sure this is set to x86, and come over here to the little name, right click and go to properties, or you can just simply press alt enter to get here faster. And since I'm on 2017, it looks like this. If you're on 2019, you'll see a little advanced tab under this configuration properties. It should say advanced like right here. Just click on that and you'll find character set and make sure this is just use multi-byte character set and hit apply and then okay. All right, so we did an empty project so we need to make all of our stuff. So go over here, right click on source files, add, new item and we'll do a C++ CPP file and we can do that and then we also need an offsets file so we'll do another one we'll do a header so dot H and I'll name this offsets so we're gonna be getting our offsets from haze dumper and uh, access this either of these just double click on it and it opens it up but we're gonna get this from haze dumper I'll have the link in the description so we're gonna go to csgo.hpp and this does update a lot you can see the last update right here and the offsets do change every now and then when the game updates uh really depending on like what the, uh, the game updated if it's not a big update sometimes the offsets will still be the same so we just want to grab these sections so starting here up to here actually from here to here copy that and paste it into your file and then from right here down to here and since this is a dot header file we need to get rid of all of this so we're going to copy that do control F to open up this and make sure you paste that in there and then click this down arrow and we're going to be replacing that text with something else so we're going to make these define so do hashtag define or pound and next we need to get rid of the equal because for defines you don't do that so then do an equal and a space replace all that and then don't forget the semicolon all right now that's that it's done let's head over here and i'm gonna zoom in just so it's easier for all of you to read this so we're in right now the the source.cpp so let's actually do our preprocessor directives so include io stream include we're gonna do windows.h uh, it'd be good to read up on this. Windows study each has a lot of the read process memory, write process memory, and those types of things that we're going to be using. I'll paste this next one in because it's kind of hard to type. 
uh, T1 help 32. We're going to be using this mainly for our get module base address function and miscellaneous things. Okay, in our last one will be include. And we're going to do quotations this time because it's an actual file that we made ourselves, not not one that's implemented. And it's going to be the offsets.h file that we just made. All right, so let's actually do our declaring of global variables. So we have four. And they're right here. So you went pointer underscore t. We use this because it can be used to store addresses for both x86 and x64 architecture. So it's really useful. And we're going to store the module base address in this. Our next one's going to be a D word. And for proc ID, same thing as PAID or process ID, just the number associated with the game, the ID of it essentially. Pretty self explanatory. Our next one will be storing the, um, the window of the game and then a handle for the process of the game. Our handle is kind of like a tunnel of communication and how we're going to read and write memory through. All right, and do keep in mind all this code will be available in the description for you. So you can copy and paste some parts like this part right here because we use this, this function right here in every video. This function, it gets the module base address. You just feed it the module name and it returns the base address. I'm gonna minimize this just so we can save space. And these next two things are gonna be templates. These templates make using the read process memory and write process memory function easier and RPM and WPM respectively stand for read process memory and write process memory. Okay, so we're gonna make two structs just for two different types of glow. So we're gonna do struct, glow, struct, and this one's gonna be for enemy. So I'll name it like that. So we're gonna do float red, float green, and float blue, RGB. And then we are also gonna have a float for alpha, which is kind of like the brightness. You can mess around with this and see how you want that to be. Now we're gonna set the red. We want our enemy to be red, so we're gonna set this to 1.F. We don't want any green in this since we want the enemy to be red, so we're gonna set this to zero. And the point F is because it's a float, 0.F, and then we'll set this to one. Feel free to experiment with this. It's kind of fun to make your, your own colors and see see how you want to make it make it really nice so you int 8 underscore t and we're just going to do some padding in this because we are just going to write one thing and it's just going to be the struct to memory uh, in between this we don't know what is actually stored here at least i don't so i'm just going to name this unknown and the value that unknown is is going to be one then we have some more padding so you int 8 underscore t this is going to be four instead this time. All right, next we have three bytes that we're going to be setting true or false values to. This first byte is going to be render occluded, and we're going to set this to true. So it's going to render people that we can uh, see, like if they're behind a wall or not. And this next one is going to be render unoccluded and you can like I said mess around with these values and see what they do like full bro full bloom is our last one and we're gonna set this to false but you can set it to true and you can see how bright it is and we're gonna initialize this as glow a and m just e and m is gonna be short for enemy and we can actually duplicate this code right here I don't want to type it again and we can rename this enemy part local and this right here local We'll set the red to zero, and if it's our friendly teammate, we want them to be green, so we'll set the green to one, and boom, that's done. Next, we're gonna make a uint pointer underscore t. Uh, we're gonna make a function as that type, and this function is gonna get the local player. And essentially what this is gonna do, it's gonna simply return, and we're using the RPM template here, so it's gonna return a reprocess memory. for whatever module base is, and we'll actually define module base later. Plus the offset DW local player, and it should it should turn purple like this, or if you have a different theme, it might turn a different color, but it should, should change like that, um, signif signifying that it's a, a defined for that address right there. If it's not, make sure you included the offsets correctly. All right, so now we can actually get into our main code. So we're gonna do int main, and here we're actually gonna define all the global variables we declared earlier. So hwnd, we're gonna use the function find window a, 
in order to get the window. So this first parameter, LP class name, it's gonna be null, same thing as nothing. And this next thing, we're gonna put in the actual window name for CSGO. And the window name is this right here. You can see the window name by Counter-Strike Global Offensive. And make sure you do spell it correctly because it can lead to errors if you don't. Now, we're, next one's gonna be get window thread process ID. And this is gonna get the process ID of the game by feeding it the window. So we give it the window of the game and it gives us the process ID. And this is gonna be proc ID like that. Make sure you spell everything correctly. And now we're gonna define module base. So module base is equal to, and here we're gonna use that function that we pasted in earlier. So get module base address. And what we wanna get the base address of the client underscore panorama dot DLL. So that's this right here. And last but not least, h process. And this is where we're gonna open a process handle. So we're gonna use the open process function. And we wanna give ourselves all access. So we're gonna use process underscore all access. This is because we want ability to both read and write memory. Uh, this next parameter, uh, inherit handle, we're gonna leave this as actually null. And then we need to feed it the process ID. So we already got the process ID and we'll give it that right there. Sweet, all right, now we're gonna do a while loop. So the exclamation point means as long as we don't do something. So we're gonna use get async key state, vk underscore end. So as long as we don't press the end key, this while loop will continue to loop through. You can change this to another key to search up a virtual key table. I chose end because that's what most people use. It's the key that should be on most keyboards on top of your arrow keys and below the home button. And this is just a nice way to exit out of the program. All right, now we are going to do a uint pointer underscore T. And it's gonna be for the glow manager, so glow manager. And we're gonna use the RPM template that we made and the type it's gonna be uint pointer. And to get this, it's gonna be the module base plus the offset for DW glow object manager. All right, and this next one's gonna be for the local team, local as in our own players team, so oops, local team. And this is gonna be again RPM. And instead of a uint pointer, it's gonna be int because this is an int right here. And here we're gonna use that get local player function. So get local player. And we gotta do the two little parentheses because it is a function, even though it takes no values. And m underscore i team num. And this will just get the team that we're on. All right, so we're gonna do a for loop right here. Int, we're gonna make an int called i and we're gonna assign it the value as one. And now as long as i is less than 32, we're gonna continue with the code. And each time this code runs through, we're gonna increment or increase the value of i by one. So the first time this, this code runs through the scope, the value of i will be one. The second time it'll be two, three, four. And the reason we wanna do this is because we wanna look at different entities because we're gonna cycle through all the entities in the game. Entities as in people. So here we're actually gonna do a uint pointer underscore t just to get the entity. So we're gonna do dw entity is what we'll call this equals rpm you went pointer underscore t because that is the value now module base plus dw entity list as the offset and here is where it is necessary for the i so we have i so the entity and we're going to multiply this by a hexadecimal value of 0x10 0x is just a hexadecimal identifier and that does look good so you know one time this value will be one times 0x10 two times 0x10 and this is how we just focus on different entities because they're all stored in the entity list all right this next is going to be int low index e i n d x equals rpm so this is going to be the dw entity which we just made right here and we are going to add the glow index so m underscore i glow index this next one we are going to get the health so E and M, just short for enemy health. This is really all entities health, but now what we're gonna do is a RPM. Again, DW entity. So we're gonna look, focus on one en enemy at a time or entity. And it's gonna be I health. So now that we have the health, we're actually going to do a check. And we have a little if statement right here. So if the health is less than one or greater than 100, it's gonna stop. But if it's in between those bounds, if it's actually the person's alive, we're gonna continue with the code. So these checks are just gonna make sure that we don't focus on anyone that is dead or doesn't exist in the game. 
This next check is the same thing essentially, but this is for dormant, so this is a dormant check. We'll call this int dormant, and we're gonna do RPM int, and this is again DW entity, but this time it's gonna be plus the offset for dormant, so M underscore B dormant. All right, and again, we're gonna do a check, so if dormant is true, we are gonna stop, but if not, we can continue with the code. Putting this right here is the same as doing equals true. Now we are actually gonna get the team that we're on, so we're gonna do int into the team, and this is gonna get the team of each person, so we're gonna do RPM, again, say this type is an int, DW entity, and then we're gonna add the offset for team, so MI underscore team num. All right, so right now we can actually get into the reading and writing part of this code. So we'll do an if statement. If the local team, so if our team is equivalent to the entities team that we're currently focusing on, we are gonna do what is ever in this scope right here. But if it's not, else if, we are gonna do what's ever in this scope, else if, and we need to actually define this because the if. So if local team is not equal to an entity team. You could just do an else, but we can do an else if just for a more secure check. All right, so here we're actually gonna do writing for the first time in this code, so WPM instead of the usual RPM, so we're gonna write process memory. And this is gonna be for the glow struct local because we want to do the local one which is our own team and this is going to be dw low manager plus and then we're going to do parentheses inside here i glow index times the value of 0x30 because that's the distance between them and then we're going to end that right there the parentheses and we're going to do plus a hexadecimal value of four and then what we want to write to whatever we're focusing on at this position right now. Oops, I forgot that. But what we want to write is going to be the glow local. So this is going to go to that position in the code. And it's going to replace all the values with the glow local values that we have here. And for this next one, I'm actually going to just copy that. We're going to do glow struct enemy this time and we're gonna glow enemy. All right, so we are done now. Oh, actually E and M, since we did make that a shorter name. So we're done now, make sure that everything looks good. Again, the code will be in the description. 0x86 or x86 for the architecture type. Make sure it's multi-byte and of course at exe. You can come over here to file and build the solution wait for that to build and then head over to this location where the debug is and then you can just launch that ESC as a administrator all right so I am in a game you can come over to the location at which the file was saved and just right click and run as administrator or if you are already administrator of your computer you can just do local windows debugger but I'll come over here right click and run as admin all right and here we can actually see my teammates are a nice green color and let me go find an enemy and the enemies are red cool thing is you shoot the enemies oh my. and they actually do fill up with the damage they have anyways I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something peace out